This talk is going to be for the laboratory number two. In laboratory number two, we are going to talk about tensile strength. The method that we use to measure the tensile strength is called Brazilian tensile strength test. In here, we use a frame to apply a force on a cylindrical sample. In this cylindrical sample, diameter and length have the same length. And the force that we are applying is along the cylindrical side of the sample. In this case, when we apply the load, we generate a tensile strength, generating the fractal in the rock. We can estimate the tensile strength based on the peak load held by the sample and by knowing the length and the diameter of the cylinder. The steps that we are going to use to, for this analysis are the same that we already seen in laboratory one, which are sample measurement, loading frame setup, fracturing, and data analysis. What we observe is that, again, we need to measure and quality check the sample that we are going to use in our analysis. The main points in here are two. First, samples are not going to be perfectly cylindrical. In this case, we have to check that the sample or the cylinder is as circular as possible. Second, that is if we have bedding, bedding direction may affect the tensile strength depending on how we apply the stress on the sample. To analyze a sample, we are going to measure two values, diameter D and length L. In the case of the diameter, we are going to measure in different directions just to check that the, side, that the sample is circular and we are going to use the average. For the length, we are going to measure at different directions. In this case, compared to laboratory one, we don't need the sample to be to have parallel end phases. So uh, length me measuring is not as critical as we observe in laboratory one. However, we have to check whether we have bedding and if we have bedding direction. So now we are going to uh, analyze and to, to check if the frame is uh, properly settled for the work. First, we have to check if the top and the bottom part of the frame are parallel or not. To check that, we use a level. And what we check is actually is that the level at the top and the bottom are aligned one with each other. With each other. Then we can proceed to sealing the sample. Again, as in laboratory one, we are going to have the, the control where we check two main parameters. First, the load, and second, the displacement. In the laboratory two, this vertical displacement is not going to be necessary. However, you can measure it in case that you need some additional information. To measure whether we are moving the sample up or down, we can use the buttons up or down. And to control the speed, we can check speed and go to the menu. In here, F2 is going to, uh, to be used to control the digits, while uh, F3 and F4 are going to check where to increase or decrease the digit that we are stepping on. Once we confirm the speed, we just hit speed to go back to the menu before. 
in this work, again, we are going to use two speeds, sitting speed and displacement speed. Using sitting speed, then we can sit our sample. It means that we are going to move up our lower frame until it touches the upper part of the frame. When that happens, we'll see that the force slightly increases. Now we are ready to do the measurement. So we just have to place protective plastic around in case that the, uh, that the rock explodes during the measurement. So now that we have the leveling check and that we see the sample, we are good to go to the fracturing. In the fracturing, what we are going to do is just, we are going to keep moving up the lower part of the frame, but and we are going to observe an increase in the load that we are applying. This load is going to reach a minimum and then it's going to have a drop when the fracture fails, when the rock fails. Uh, by the end of the, after the data analysis, we can see a video where we are applying um, strength on the sample until it fractures. So, as I mentioned before, we have to move up, we expect to see a force drop, and then we immediately stop the analysis, take a picture of the fracture, and extract the data file for our report. Finally, we can proceed with our data analysis. To calculate the tensile strength, we already have the length and the diameter of the sample. So we have to find which was the highest load that we applied in our load cell. And from this value, we can calculate the tensile strength. 